Hey everybody, I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys a quick lesson here on two-step equations where one of the, or not just one, but uh, where the equation has two terms in the uh, numerator, where they're basically in fraction form and kind of how do you handle the fraction, you know, when the equation in, itself, in and of itself is in the fraction. It's a little bit different um, than just solving an equation with a fraction in it. So um, let's go ahead and get started here. The first example right here, um, the first example is where we have, let me just make sure you guys know what I'm talking about here, is this one right there. So you have x minus seven in the numerator, all divided by three, and that all equals negative 12. So um, I have the steps on the right, and what you're gonna wanna do is, let's write in the steps, and then let's do the steps as well, and um, see how this comes out. So the, um, so the first step, is to, because um, we're using inverse operations here, guys. The first step is going to be to undo the fraction. All right. Now it's important to know what a fraction is. Now it's, it's important to know that a fraction really is a division problem, right? We talked about that in class. A fraction really is a division problem. So remember, if we're using inverse operations, we want to be able to undo it. All right. So how do you undo division? Well, you multiply. So we're going to undo the fraction by multiplying. All right, and we're gonna multiply both sides of the equation. That's the property of equality right there. We're gonna multiply both sides of the equation. And um, now, how do you know what to multiply by? Well, it's basically whatever number is in the denominator. Uh, sometimes it's gonna have to be the LCD. We're not there yet. Uh, these examples that I'm gonna give you today are gonna be pretty simple. We're, you see the number in the denominator, we're gonna multiply by it. But in other, you know, in other examples uh, coming up, probably next week, uh, we're gonna have problems where um, you're gonna to wanna to find the LCD of those numbers, which it shouldn't be too difficult. But yeah, that's the first step. The first step is going to be to multiply both sides of the equation by three. Okay, now I made some of those symbols over there where it says copy and paste. You should be able to drag those over. So I'm gonna drag this over to right there. And then I'm gonna drag that over right there. That's a multiplication sign. And like I uh, was saying in class, I would try to avoid using an X for the multiplication symbol. I'm using the binary, the dot symbol, the binary symbol for multiplication, which um, is probably the least confusing way to do it. Because sometimes when you use an X, it gets confused with being, you know, this, this particular equation has an X in it as one of its variables. So it can get confused with the variable sometimes or um, and it's kind of get lost in all that stuff. So uh, that's what we're gonna do first. We're gonna, first we're gonna multiply both sides by three. So here's the important part. Now in multiplying, you know, when we multiply both sides by three, we're not gonna distribute the three into the X minus seven. What happens right off the bat is that stuff right there that's going to cancel out, okay? So that three is not even going to have a chance to distribute into x minus seven. So we're going to, that cancels itself out because that's cross canceling right there, okay? And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite the problem, okay? So we're going to rewrite the problem. Now all that's left on the left side of the equation is x minus seven. So go ahead and write that down. So x minus seven, you guys can put that in your computer. And then on the right side of the equation is where we uh, multiply negative 12 times three. So negative 12 times three is negative 36. So we're gonna put that there. So that's important. I know I've talked about that in class as well, which is getting in the habit of when you do, when you do a step in algebra, rewrite the problem. Cause you're always kind of transforming the problem. The problem is always shifting. So now it's a new problem. It was X minus seven over three equals negative 12. And now it's X minus seven equals negative 36. So it's a different problem now. Um, I mean, it's, it's the same problem that we're working on, but now it looks different, right? Because we uh, applied inverse operations uh, during the first step. That's what we did. So the next problem or the next uh, step is to just solve. And I put on there solve using inverse operations. So I don't want to uh, go into all the, you know, the steps for inverse operations because we've talked about that previously. That is what we're going to do. 
All right, so the, the first thing we're going to do, I mean, the only thing we really have to do is add 7 to both sides. So if we add 7 to the left side, we're going to add 7 to the right side. Now those cancel out right there. Those cancel out. And what we're left with is the answer. All right, so we're going to put x equals and whatever negative 36 plus 7 is. So negative 36 plus 7. Now, those have different signs, so we're going to actually find the difference of those two numbers. So negative 36 plus 7 is going to be negative 29. Because the negatives have the higher absolute value. And that's it. All right, and always, you know, of course, check your solution and make sure um, it works. But uh, that does. Okay, next example here. Very much the same, almost exactly the same kind of problem. Uh, now this one, the only thing that's different about it is that um, the right side of it is an actual fraction, okay? But don't let that uh, throw you off. Both the fractions, if you think about it, both the fractions have a four. So we don't have to find a common denominator. So the first step is going to be to multiply both sides by four. So that's going to be our first step. So that is what we're going to do. So I put... I rewrote the fraction down here just so that you're not messing up the problem there. But we have, uh, we're going to multiply there. And we're going to multiply on that side. So remember, we're going to multiply both sides. Remember, what you do to one side, you have to do to the other. All right, so what are we going to multiply by? Well, we're going to multiply by 4, right? We've already indicated that. So we're going to put a 4 there. And we're going to put a 4 here. And then there's going to be some cross canceling. There's going to be cross canceling on both ends of this problem. So the first thing that cross cancels, the first thing that's going to cross cancel are the fours right there. Again, you're not going to distribute the four into the x minus six. It's very tempting to want to do that, but leave it be because the fours cancel each other out. And on the right side of the equation, the same thing is going to happen. So we're going to get rid of those fours right there. All right, so now we have to rewrite the problem, okay? So both fractions have been, what I like to call, cleared. You know, in algebra, that's kind of a good thing. It's a, it's a nice thing to be able to do, especially when you have a lot of fractions in the problem. And believe me, we're gonna get problems coming up here uh, where we have lots of fractions in them. And clearing the fractions really makes it um, so much easier. It just does. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and rewrite the problem x minus 6 equals 5. Okay, so those 4s canceled each other out, uh, and that those 4s did not affect the x minus 6, nor did it affect the 5. And um, now we're just going to use inverse operations to solve. So the next step is going to be to add 6 to both sides, and get your calculator out for this. So uh, go ahead and cancel those out, don't get your calculator out. But yeah, that's it x equals whatever 5 plus 6 is, and call your mom, ask for help, or do something. No, you don't need help with this. 5 plus 6 is, what is that, 200 or something? No, it's not. It's 11. It's 11. So put x equals 11. And there you have it. There's your um, answer. Okay, so this lesson was pretty simple. It's just kind of we're extending um, our lessons of equations are getting a little bit more complicated. Every lesson that we do, we're going to get, um, you know, the, the equations are going to get a little bit more sophisticated every time. So uh, this one, just like I said, was a, a little bit of a, a, a little bit of a step up from what we were doing before. Okay. So everyone have a, a great night or a great day, depending on when you're watching this. And I'll see you later. Take care.